Hello everyone and welcome. In this video sponsored by Advance Auto Parts, Charles, hey, Mr. Humble Mechanic and I indeed. are going to be talking about what to do when your car doesn't have any heat. We are indeed. I'm excited. So Charles was a dealer technician for quite some time. How many years, Charles? Uh, about 14 years. Seen 14 a lot of broken cars. Years. A couple that didn't have heat, believe it or a not. A couple that didn't have heat. So Charles is going to help us walk through the scenarios of what's going on with your car and why doesn't it have heat. Might even get some tips on how to actually figure out which part is the problem. Amazing. Speaking of parts, a big thank you to Advance Auto Parts for sending parts for this video demonstration. You can use the Advance Auto Parts mobile app for your car part needs. Parts! Let's start off with a quick overview of how this heating system is going to heat up your cabin. So we're going to start with the engine and the engine is going to have coolant jackets surrounding it. So as that engine gets warm, it's going to heat up those cooling jackets and then you're going to have a water pump circulate that coolant to different areas around your car. It'll send up to the front of the car where it will go through the radiator to help keep the engine cool and it can send that coolant to your heater core so then you can use that heat along with an electric fan and take the heat, blow air through this heater core and into your cabin, keep you nice and warm and toasty when it's cold outside. Toasty, toasty. Having a car with no heat is a miserable driving experience. Agreed. So Charles, here's the question. I'm a customer, I come into your shop, I bring my, my car, put it up on the lift and say, Charles, my heater doesn't work, what's the deal? Where are we gonna start? Yeah, so this, this really depends on the kind of car, but initially my first thing is I'm gonna walk around the car and make sure there's no damage. Say the radiator smashed in, uh, we, got, we got a lot of problems that we have to deal with. Once I feel good about the overall visual condition of the exterior of the car, we'll move to the inside. First step is to do nothing and just evaluate the customer's settings. Believe it or not, I have had complaints of my heat doesn't work and it was because the dial wasn't set to <laughs> hot, uh, which this is a pretty basic setup, but on a lot more complicated systems, I actually totally understand. If you were colorblind, maybe it wouldn't be obvious which one to exactly. turn it to. Exactly. Sometimes they put temperatures on them and makes you feel dumb because you don't know how much it is in Celsius. <laughs> After I've made sure the car actually has the heat set, we're gonna do a little bit more basic evaluations. I'll probably take a thermometer and drop it in the vent so that I can look at what the temperature actually is as opposed to feeling what it is. Hot to you and hot to me might be very different. So then I'm gonna start playing with the dials and seeing what happens. I'm gonna turn the fan all the way to high to make sure we actually have airflow coming out of the vents. I'm going to move the direction knob and change the location of the blend doors to see if airflow changes there too. Do we have it coming out of the defrost, the face, and the feet? Okay, so you mentioned blend door there. What is this thing and how does it work? Yeah, so the way it works depends on the heating and air conditioning system of the car, but the very simple definition is it's a small door that changes our direction of airflow. So sometimes this changes the temperature, sometimes this changes where the air actually flows. They all kind of function about the same though. Okay, and so if it were to get stuck on one position, that could prevent you? Absolutely, so if you have this blend door and say this way is hot, and this way is cold, if it's stuck on cold, even when you turn the dial, of course you're never gonna get any heat in the cabin. And what I do, it's kind of this weird little trick that a lot of cars do, as you rotate the dial on either the direction of airflow or temperature, when the blend door closes, a lot of times it makes a noise, or you can actually hear something happening. And I'm not so concerned with what exactly is happening at this point. I just want to hear something happen. So I know that when I turn these dials, it's doing something. All right, so we've walked around the outside of the car. Everything looks to be fine. We've then gotten inside the car. We're looking at the temperature settings, looking at the control settings. Everything seems to work so far. Where are we going next? So one thing before we move to under the hood, which is gonna be our next step, I also make sure I look at the coolant temperature gauge in the instrument cluster to make sure that the vehicle's actually up to operating temperature. If it's not up to operating temperature, uh, there's no way we can extract that heat from the heater core. And that also may point to an issue we're having under the hood as opposed to inside the car. All right, let's move under the hood. Right, so once we are under the hood, the first thing I look at is the coolant itself. I'm looking at level and condition. If we have a bunch of stuff floating around in our coolant, that could point to an issue with perhaps a clogged heater core. And it's definitely worth mentioning, never open the cooling system while it's hot. That is under pressure and that can lead to severe injury. 
Now Charles mentioned looking at the coolant level, but this is a contained system. So if the coolant level is actually low, there, there's no reason that coolant should be used up over time. So you then have to start to look for why is my coolant low? Exactly, and that can come in a number of forms. The most common is just a simple coolant leak, uh, radiator, any of the components could, could be causing that leak. If you do this evaluation of a leak and you don't see anything, Honestly, my next thought is the leak might be coming from the heater core and actually leaking into the cabin of the car. If our system is completely sealed, then maybe we have an issue with the coolant burning in the engine. And you would probably notice that with the vehicle walk around, if it's running, seeing that smoke come from the exhaust. Exactly, you'll probably see a white smoke, and usually when an, an engine is burning coolant in any significant capacity, it has a very distinct sweet smell. Yes. So if you do end up finding a coolant leak, obviously that needs to be addressed because this can lead to larger problems. Yes, definitely fix that first. However, if we look at our coolant, the level's fine, the condition's fine, where are we moving next? Next, we're gonna move to evaluating coolant flow throughout the system. This starts by measuring the temperature of coolant hoses both before and after the thermostat to make sure that we don't have a stuck thermostat, say one hose is really hot, and on the back side of the thermostat is ice cold. That means we're not letting coolant flow properly through the thermostat. So this right here is a thermostat and it's a helpful little device for keeping your engine within a certain temperature range. And so what it does initially is it closes off so that when you first start your car and it's cold, it allows that engine to keep the coolant that's beside it, beside it for that short duration where it needs to warm up. Then once it gets to operating temperature, this thermostat opens up and it allows for that coolant to flow to the radiator. So then it simply becomes a balancing act where this thermostat regulates how much flow you're allowing to come out of that engine block to go up to the radiator so that your engine maintains its ideal temperature. It really should stay within a pretty narrow range that your engine temperature is going to sit at. And actually, so I had a thermostat fail on my first car, my Integra, um, and the way that I kind of noticed that something was going wrong is that as I was driving, if I would go down a really long hill, I could actually watch my coolant temperature go <laughs> down. And so That's the car awesome. is still running and yep. yet the coolant temperature is decreasing. And that indicated to me, okay, the coolant is still going through the radiator when it doesn't need to. Yep. So the thermostat was cracked open, it had failed open. Yeah, they can actually fail both ways. Uh, failing stuck open, that's typically the symptom is the heat doesn't work in the car or my car never gets all the way up to temperature. Most of the time when it fails stuck closed, it's a more severe problem because it's overheat. So your engine gets too hot. That hot coolant is never allowed to exit the engine, flow through our radiator and cool back down. And so if it does fail closed, can you still have heat? You may. Or you may not. <laughs> because you don't have that flow, you're probably not getting enough hot coolant up to the heater core. That's typically the highest point in okay. your cooling system. Now this style of thermostat is a pretty basic style and it's important to note on a modern car with advanced cooling systems, this might actually be electronically controlled by the engine computer. And so rather than maybe temperature checking the hoses, you might use a scan tool to evaluate how well this is functioning. All right, so aside from our thermostat, what else are we looking at as far as this coolant flow? Most likely next, I'm going to move to the water pump and see how much coolant is actually moving through the system. And it's important to note that you can do these in different orders, depending on what the car is telling you, or really depending on how easy it is to access some of these components. Critically important to the heating system is the heater core. It has heat right in the name. It's got heat in the name. Yeah, so these can fail in really three main ways. We can have a clogged heater core, so if our coolant was contaminated, a lot of times that stuff will settle in the heater core, causing no heat, low heat, or really weirdly, heat on like one side of the car or the other, depending on the design. We can also have a heater core that leaks, which means that the interior of your car will probably smell sweet like syrup. And the third way, and for me, kind of the most aggravating way, is an air pocket stuck in the heater core. A lot of times heater cores are oriented in a strange way, or maybe they're the highest point of the cooling system, which makes bleeding the air out of the system really tricky. And even a small air bubble inside of a heater core can lead to reduced heat. 
All right, so we've covered the common components. We've talked about how they work, how they might fail, what sort of symptoms you might see. Right, this is the common stuff that I've seen in my career, but it's important to note that you could have some really <laughs> random things causing your car to have no heat. Say you just got a car and maybe the previous owner completely bypassed the heater core altogether, of course, that's gonna lead to, uh, to no heat in your vehicle. So a big thanks to Advance Auto Parts for sponsoring the video. Of course, check out their link in the video description and check out their mobile app. I, I'm, I'm on it right now. <laughs> I was shopping, sorry. Charles, thank you so much for helping out with the video. Absolutely, Jason, thanks for hanging, appreciate it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.